العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء وخاتم المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا بالقاسم محمد وعلى أهل بيته التيبين الطاهر المعصومين ولا نتدامت الباقي لعدائهم من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد سسترز وبرادرز الإيمان سلام عليكم We have been looking at the brief review of uh, Surah Yaseen, Surah number 36 of the Quran. As I had mentioned earlier, this is a surah which consists of the three fundamental concepts of Islam, Tawheed, Nubuwat, and Qiyamat. But looking at the uh, special regard that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for his most uh, beloved messenger, uh, he has named this surah by his name, Yaseen. And the sequence of the discussion actually is not with Tawheed, rather it starts with Nubuwat, out of respect for the Prophet. And then the Tawheed, and then it goes on to, uh, ends with the discussion on Qiyamat. Uh, what we have seen till now, we have been looking at the first of the three sections of the uh, surah, which deals with the Prophet and the Quran or the message and the messenger. The first uh, six ayat were about the Prophet and the Quran itself. The second um, set of ayat from ayat number seven to ten, this was the response of the deniers, those who rejected the message of uh, the Quran and the Prophet. And tonight, inshallah, we'll look at the two ayat, or at least the first one of the two, uh, which was the positive side. And so this is where we see that it starts with a discussion about the Qur'an and the Prophet, and then the negative response from the mushrikeen, especially the leaders of uh, mushrikeen in Mecca, and going on to the uh, positive side. Just uh, as an overview, you know, the first two ayat, this is uh, where we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the Prophet, the Quran, that, and the Prophet being from the Mursaleen, ala sirat al mustaqim And that Quran is actually a book revealed by the Lord who is Al-Aziz, Al-Rahim. And then ends with this statement about the purpose, لِتُمْضِرَ So that the Prophet may warn the people whose immediate ancestors had not been warned. Then we come to ayat number 7 to 10, where um, we saw the symbolic way how, um, because they, they did not really respond positively to the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah withheld extra guidance. And we talked about the two concepts, tawfiq and khidlan. Tawfiq means when a person you know, uses the initial guidance that Allah has given to everyone. And if they move in that direction, Allah gives them extra guidance, and that is known as tawfiq. Whereas those who are given this basic guidance, but they do not avail it, they do not use it, they ignore it, especially when they know the truth and they ignore it. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that's it. I don't have to help you anymore. And that state is known as the state of khidlan, opposite of tawfiq. And that is a state of abandonment uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the result is that those who are in the state of being abandoned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not have the ability to see the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The two ayat that we looked yesterday where we saw that, you know, they were not able anymore to see the signs within themselves as well as outside themselves. <clears throat> now to go on to the positive side, those who basically accepted the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ayat number 11, very short but very powerful. إِنَّمَا تُنْظِرُوا مَنِ اتَّبَعَ الذِّكْرَ وَخَشْرِيَ الرَّحْمَانِ بِالْغَيْبِ فَبَشِّرُهُ بِمَغْفِرَةٍ وَعَجْرٍ كَرِيمٍ That, O oh Muhammad, you can only warn one who follows the reminder and fears the merciful Lord in secret 
So give good news to him of forgiveness and noble reward. This is opposite of the, uh, the deniers. This is a positive sign. Let us look at this ayat. And see what we understand. What message do we get here? Number one, this is the prophet's, uh, the, the believer's response. The, the prophet was sent litumdhira. Which means he's navir, he's warner. He gives the warning that if you don't follow the message of Allah, you will be punished. But this warning of the prophet will only find fertile ground among those who are sincere. There were many, many non-believers who were uh, simple people. When the message came to them, you know, they were open and they accepted. But when it came to the majority of those who are known, known as Sanadid of Quraysh, the leaders of Quraysh, they had their own, you know, uh, issues, their own agenda, their own, uh, they were hijabat, veils over their minds and their hearts. So even though the message was coming from Rasulullah in form of the words of the Quran, it did not penetrate and it did not find uh, any fertile ground in their hearts. A person who would respond positively to the message of Quran and the Prophet is a person who would have two qualities. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he says, إِنَّمَا تُنْظِرُوا that you can only warn a person who has these two qualities. Number one, man ittaba'a dhikr A dhikr here basically means the Qur'an. So the, the wording, man ittaba'a dhikr you can explain it by saying, man ittaba'a al-Qur'an. The person who follows the Qur'an. One of the names of Qur'an is, uh, it is known as al-dhikr. Now, why is the Quran called a dhikr, a reminder? Was there something before we had given and we just forgot about it? So Quran is now coming to remind us. Well, what it means is that the Quran is actually appealing to the pure nature of human being, the fitrah of the insan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this innate ability in every human being, every child as you see in Islamic literature, Every child is born as a Muslim. You know, it's the external factors which, you know, take them away from the, the natural path. And so Quran is really not talking about something new. It just comes to appeal to the, you know, pure nature of a human being that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, created within us. And therefore the Quran is a dhikr. It is a reminder uh, for us. Now this Qur'an is a reminder for what? It is to be followed. Look at the words, ittaba'a, man ittaba'a dhikr. The word ittaba'a is the word, in, in, in even Urdu we say this, uh, ittiba', to follow. And so the, the very first quality uh, which is required in order to understand the Qur'an and get the guidance from it, um, and be positive to the message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. <laughs> is ittiba of the Qur'an. Now, what happens? We love the Qur'an. Don't we? We respect the Qur'an. Whenever we read it, first of all, we kiss it. When we finish it again, we... No problem, it's all good things. We like to re re read it and recite it. And even I've been emphasizing, emphasizing in the last few nights that tilawat is the beginning of the process of gaining guidance from the Quran. But that's not the end of it. You know, Muslims like to memorize it. But all these things are nothing just but like wudu before the salat. If you do the wudu and then don't do the salat, you get the little, little bit of sawab uh, there, but you don't really get the, 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 the purpose is not, you know, fulfilled. And so everything, to love the Qur'an, to respect the Qur'an, to stand up for the Qur'an when a pastor in Florida, for example, wants to burn it, to feel angry about it, these are all good things. But was Qur'an for that? 
that if somebody burns it, we have to be angry. That's a very natural reaction of those who love the Quran, and which is no problem there. But the question is, what was Quran for? Man ittaba'a al-dhikr. It is ittiba. It is to follow. It is to live by the Quran. So everything that we do, whether we love the text, we respect the, we want to stand by the book, nobody should, you know, violate it. You know, they can do whatever they want. They want to burn all the copies of the Quran. If the Muslims live by the Quran, the Quran still will be there alive. You know, we, it, so it's, it's not really for us an issue in that way. So all these things are good, but the main thing we always forget. That all these things that we do is basically just like doing wudu, but then not doing the salat. Because everything that we do is to follow the Quran and to live by the Quran. And so this concept of ittiba, man ittaba al-dhikr, a person who really wants to get that extra guidance from the Quran, the way it says in Surah Baqarah, hudan lil muttaqeen, that is when we follow what we know from it. When we, lo when we follow it, then we will be able to understand the deeper meaning of the ayat of Quran. This is very much relevant even to our name, Shia. We think, well, to love Ali, to respect Ali, to recite Qasida of Ali, to memorize the names and everything, which are all good things. Nobody says, you know, you should do it, do it even more. But what is the definition and the meaning and the soul of the term Shia? It means to follow, to do ittiba. So th this, this is where we have to realize when we talk about the Quran and the Imam, in both cases, we can only really get in touch with the Quran and the Imam if we follow them and we do the ittiba. Salawat <laughs> If we have time at the end, we'll, we'll come back to this theme. Let us look at the second quality. There were two things which uh, was mentioned in this ayat number 11. Uh, of those who positively responded to the message of the Prophet in Mecca. So the first one was man dhikr The second one was khashiyar rahman bil ghaib The one who fears the merciful God in secret. Every word here demands attention. I think even in Surah Rahman we talked about it. Um, even in Surah Mulk I think last, last year in Ramadan. Look at the concept of khashiya which means to fear. Fearing whom? Is the zat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fearful and scary? Nauzubillah, if we, you know, kind of visualize him, he is a monster. No, it is not the zat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is to be feared. It is the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is to be feared. Our khawf, our khishya, our process of fearing is, you know, linked to displeasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that fear of displeasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually based on law. And I use this example. You know, sometimes you, you know, if you live in Saddam's time in Iraq, you say, oh, I fear Saddam. That's based on negativity. He was zalim, he was tyrant. You know, he can harm you. But then sometimes you say, okay, I don't want to do this because I'm afraid of you know, um, displeasing my wife. Is that same fear as you had for Saddam, for example? No. Why? This is also a fear. You say, I'm, I'm afraid of doing this because she will feel unhappy about it. That fear is based on, on love, actually. When we talk about fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not fearing the zat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are afraid of displeasing Him. And how will Allah be displeased? 
He will be displeased if we, you know, violate the laws that he has sent uh, for us. And so number one, we understand this concept of fear. It's not our based on negativity, it's based on positive. Number two, it doesn't say, you know, fear the frightful God. This is actually a contradiction here in the words. Khashiyar Rahman. Fear the merciful. But if he's merciful, why should you fear him? Mercy and fear don't go hand in hand. But this is not only one place. Many places you will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala combines these two words. Wa khashiyar Rahman. A mu'min fears the merciful God. And this is where we have to realize that, you know, there is, there is a reason why these two words have been put together. And the whole issue is that, you know, we are talking about combining these two things because a mu'min, a true mu'min is someone who is able to balance the element of khawf and raja in his heart. Khawf here we are referring to the fear of displeasing Allah or the fear of Allah's punishment. And a raja means ummid. And what it means is to have hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In one of the hadiths that we have from Imam Jafar al-Sadiq alayhi salatu wa salam, You know, this is a symbolic way of putting things where the Imam says that if you uh, cut open the heart of a mu'min and divide the khawf and raja, you will see it is exactly half and half. The level of khawf and the level of raja, the fear of Allah's punishment and hope in Allah's forgiveness would be equal. And so if it is not there, then there work, we have to work on it. That is what Imam is saying, that a mu'min is somebody, in his heart, the level of khawf and raja is almost uh, equal to one another. To the extent that when we talk about the uh, mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, to lose hope in Allah's forgiveness and mercy is one of the major sins. You know, if you look at the list of what is known as gunahane kabira, the major sins, number one is shirk. After shirk, the second in list is al-ya'as or al-qunut and rahmatillah. To lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Islam, a mu'min is told that you might be sometimes what you consider to be the lowest level of your imam. Going through depression or whatever. But even in that state, you are not allowed to lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just one ayat on this issue where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Prophet, Qul ya ibadi alladheena asrafu ala anfusihim. O Muhammad say to those servants of mine who have been unjust to themselves, which means those who commit sins. The people who commit sins, actually they are unjust to themselves. They make themselves liable for the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Say to them, لا تقنط من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الظنوب جميعا Do not lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is willing to forgive all the sins. إنه والغفور الرحيم He is indeed the forgiving and merciful. And so we have that element of rahma. We emphasize in Islam, in Quran, the only sin which Allah in Quran has clearly said that he is not going to forgive is the issue of shirk. But other than when it comes to this issue, this is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that yes, you know, the, the sense of forgiveness is there. So what kind of fear are we talking about here? The last three, uh, the, the third word from that ayat, وَخَشِيَ الرَّحْمَانُ بِالْغَيْبِ a person who follows the Qur'an and who has more potential of gaining from the Qur'an, the second quality is that he fears the merciful God, Bil Ghaib. Now there's a lot of discussion about what does it mean Bil Ghaib here, but we have taken the 
um, the meaning which will be closest to the context, and that is that a person who fears the merciful God in secret. To fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in public doesn't have much value. Because then the fear of the public is also, there is shirk there, kind of. <laughs> shirk khafi. A person doesn't become mushrik, but you know, a public sphere is, is part of it. But the main thing is when there is nobody there. Nobody to see, nobody to know, nobody can find anything that you or me are doing. But even in that secret situation, if the sense is there that he is there, that fear of Allah being there, watchful, aware of what we are doing, that is the khishriya that is required here. Imam Hussain alayhi salam in Dua Arafah, <coughs> It's a very long du'a, but if you see after a very long preamble, the introduction of the du'a, when he comes to the actual part where we basically do the du'a and ask for something, the very first thing that Imam Hussain is teaching us to ask for, he says, oh Allah, aj'alni an akhshaka ka'annaka arak, ka'anni arak. O oh Allah, make me fear you as if I see you in front of myself. That is the kind of fear that we are asking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that as if he is right there in the front. And that is a level of khashiyah which opens the hearts for the guidance of the Quran to come to us at a higher level. <clears throat> What will happen? What will happen when a person إِنَّمَا تُنْظِرُوا لِمَنِ اتَّبَعَ الذِّكْرِ وَخَشْيَ Rahman, Where the Prophet, when he warns a person who follows the Qur'an and fears the merciful God in secret, what will be the result of that? This is still one ayat, but very powerful. فَبَشِّرُهُ بِمَغْفِرَةٍ وَعَجْرٍ كَرِيمٍ the Prophet is being told, because the ayat is actually addressing him, that, so give good news to him of forgiveness and noble reward. Now here it doesn't even say, you know, maghfirah with alif lam or al-ajrul kareem, ajrin kareem here. This is, these words have been used in Arabic language in order to show the importance of um, the 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 item or the entity being discussed. And maghfirah is the first thing. What do we want on the day of Qiyamah? All the amal that we do in Shabi Qadr, the very first dua is Allah, release us from the fire of Jahannam. So the first dua of every mu'min and mu'mina is to get rid of the sins. So maghfirah is the number one thing that we ask for. Then we talk about wa'ajrin kareem and the noble reward, a, 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 a reward which will be complete, a reward will, which will be perfect. There is no deficiency in the reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give to a mu'min who, ha, who is follower of the Qur'an and who has this khashiyah and the fear of the merciful God even in secret. <clears throat> Let me go back to the ayat and try to draw your attention to a point which is worthwhile noticing here. The ayat begins with the words innama tundiru which means that verily you will warn or you can warn only man ittaba'a dhikra wa khashya rahman bil ghayb. It starts with the concept of the prophet being nadir. Nadir means somebody who is giving warning. But it ends with the dimension of the Prophet where he is doing the Basharat. You know, the Quran also describes him in one of the ayat that we have sent you as Bashiran wa Nadira. Bashiran means somebody who gives good news of uh, Jannah if you follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Nadir somebody who warns you of Jahannam if you 
disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The ayat begins with the concept of the Prophet being nadir. Innama tundiru. Verily you, O Muhammad, can warn only a person man ittaba'a dhikra who follows the Quran wa khashya rahman bil ghayb and he fears the merciful God in secret fa bashiruhu. So now you, Prophet, who are warning them, such people, now it is your time to also give them good news. Fabashiru. Give them the good news of maghfirat and ajr kareem. This is where we see the whole issue of khawf and raja, even in this ayat itself. The Prophet is not only being mentioned as nadir all the time, neither just as a bashir. The problem with our community um, even to the level of speakers is either they go on one side or the other side. Either it's only azab and azab and azab to make people, you know, hopeless of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or there is always forgiveness, 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 you know, people become bold. Oh, we, Alhamdulillah, you know, we have. We have this certificate. We can do whatever we want. No, we need to have that you know, balance. The Prophet was Bashir as well as Nadir. He was a Nadir as well as Bashir. And Islam has both these elements. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful, but he is also an entity who has to be feared as far as displeasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is concerned. Let me end with a statement from Amir al Mu'minin Ali bin Abi Talib alayhi salatu wa This is in the Ahlul Balagha, but a full version of this statement is in Usul Kafi with the Sanad from Amir al Mu'minin where he says, Ala khubirukum bil faqi haq al faqi. He says, Do you want me to describe a true faqi? A, f- a true scholar of religion? And then he gives the qualities. And he says, Man lam yuqannit al nas min rahmatillah. The first quality of a good faqi is that. He does not make people lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So does not always use the asa and the fear of Jahannam. وَلَمْ يُؤْمِنُهُمْ مِنْ عَضَابِ اللَّهِ وَلَمْ يُرَخِّسْ لَهُمْ فِي مَعَاسِ اللَّهِ Neither does he make them feel secure from the azab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Means he has to create a balance. The fear has to be there but not to the extent of losing the hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that hope in the mercy shouldn't be to the level where a person feels secure that, oh, you know, I'm a Shia. I do azadari. You know, I don't have to worry about Jahannam. They say, oh, even if we go in Jahannam, we'll do something that there'll be no fire there. It doesn't work that way. This is wishful thinking. You know, you have to this... Uh, you know, sense of khawf and raja on both sides. You have to show yourself to be worthy of being a true mu'min and a true Shia of Ali bin Abi Talib alayhi salatu wa salam. And then Ali goes on, and this is a part which is not in Nahl Balagha, where he says, a true faqih, number one, who doesn't make people lose hope in the mercy of Allah, nor he makes them secure from feeling secure from the adab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَمْ يَتْرُكِ الْقُرْآنَ رَغْبَةً عَنْهُ إِلَىٰ غَيْرِهِ And he does not abandon the Qur'an in love for something else. Anyone who says, we, well, we have the ayat of Qur'an, but we need something else. According to Ali, he is not a true faqih. You know, if somebody says, you know, we should look at the uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights as the basis of our thinking, Quran is absolute, well then you're not a faqih. Ala la khayra fi ilmin laysa fihi tafahum. There is no benefit in the knowledge in which there is no proper understanding. Wala khayra fi qaraatin laysa fiha tadabbur. Ali says that there is no benefit in recitation in which you do not, do not use the process of reflection on what you are reciting. وَلَا خَيْرَ فِي عِبَادَةٍ لَيْسَ فِيهِ تَفَكُّرٍ 
and there is no benefit in ibadat in which you do not really think about what you are doing do not just make it a habit and these are the words from none other than amir al mu'minin imam al muttaqin ali ibn abi talib alayhi salatu was salam may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to be the among the true followers of the prophet ahlul bayt and the quran inshallah we'll continue the second ayat of this section tomorrow